I have managed to get not one, not two, but 11 of the rarest limited edition smartphones on the planet. This has taken me months. I've had to hire middlemen just to be able to source some of the rarer ones. Oh yeah, and my card got blocked three times because my bank was convinced there was no way that I would actually do this. But here we are. So let's find out if it was worth it. From the least expensive all the way to the most expensive. So kicking things off with the Coca-Cola phone. Two boxes. We'll start with the small one. You got an insert on top, which you open by peeling off the cola bottle layer. Except that's completely pointless because you still have to open it from the other side. So peel. That didn't work. Peel. Peel. Oh my goodness. Okay, two sheets of pretty nice stickers. You got a membership card, which does nothing. Oh, this is cool. And then a SIM ejector tool shaped after a cola bottle cap, which is equally unaccessible. And yep, I bent that one in half. This is going really well. And then the phone. It does feel quite drinkable. I feel like they perfectly match the sheen of that to an actual Coke cap. You got a special boot up sound and home screen, a unique Coca-Cola charging animation, even a Coca-Cola shutter sound. This is so ridiculously cheap for a limited edition, especially considering there's only 6,000 units. But I guess the core phone parts like the screen and the camera are pretty mediocre. So I guess it balances out. If that's the phone, what is in here? What in God's name is this? Okay, it's like a dude made of Coke. I really can't tell if this is actually cool or if it's just junk. What do you think? Oh, I wonder if this is made so that we can actually open the can. This, this is not our table. Now stepping things up to $470, we got the Astro Boy phone. It's based off a Japanese anime all about a boy who gets killed and then is brought back to life as a robot. It's kind of dark, but I think it's a cool premise. Pretty ordinary size package this time around. So we'll take the outer sleeve off and we've got an upper box, which has both a selection of sticker packs and a pretty skimpy, but quite strong feeling case. We've got the phone, anything special below that? Not really, let's focus on this. Okay, wow. This is lively. It's a very heavily customized theme here. Very red and black, very gamer. Oh, do you know what? The back of this phone is crazy though. The level of detail is insane for the price. I guess they're showing the fact that on the surface, he just looks like a normal boy, but inside this boy is wired up. We've even got the poor guy's specs on the side. Let's test the charging animation. Oh, cool. It's his head filling up. Look at the dial pad. <laughs> Who can I call? Hi, mom. You okay, darling? How's the car keeping up? The head cushion is so comfortable, you could just sleep on it. Probably better if you don't <laughs> sleep on it. <laughs> $600. We're already at a stage where I don't think I've ever been this excited for a limited edition. It's Harry Potter time. I mean, this is just stunning. So the cube slips off and underneath we've got a, what is up with me in this packaging today? Okay, a little sheet of stickers and a manual, plus a leather strap to keep the earphones tied up. This is cool. We've got the earphones. So these are the Harry Potter Red Me Buds 4. Oh, the golden snitch. Man, this is quality weighty stuff right here. And then the earphones themselves. Safe to say the unboxing is magical. What about the sound though? So the hinge is nice and snappy, but not quite as firm as higher end earbuds. The earbuds are very much on the shiny side. Oh, they've got little uh, magical spell sounds when you put them in. Really good passive noise cancellation. I feel like I'm in a bubble. It's got quite nice sparkly high notes. It just doesn't hit super hard on the deep end. So then the phone. I mean, this kind of takes the presentation of a whole other level. It looks like a proper spell book. So take off the magnetic tab and oh my God, it's a letter from Hogwarts. Knowing my current unboxing track record, I'm gonna destroy this one too. Oh, oh, <laughs> okay, got it. So this is like the letter that's given to witches and wizards to prepare for their first day at school. It's got a custom SIM ejector tool, of course. It says platform nine and three quarters. You can really tell this Redmi company is trying to properly maximize this opportunity and cram every Harry Potter Easter egg in one go into this. At the bottom, there's an insert with three full pages of stickers, a case. It's actually got a proper gold button as well. Everything about this phone is custom and I really appreciate that. The map, oh, this is like the Marauders map, except it's actually a manual for the phone. And then the phone. Oh, there's something else underneath. It's a normal charger and cable. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Let's unwrap this bad boy. Wow, there's so much going on here. Oh, and the cameras are linked like spectacles. And you've got the lightning bolt just above, which is kind of like Harry's forehead. The text is embossed, the logo is glossy. This is nice. There's so many phones like this, where essentially the company only really wants people from one particular region to buy it. Presumably because that's the only region for which they actually have bought the licenses for the brand. In this case, the phone was made for China. So in order for us to actually get one here in the UK, we had to work with a Chinese resident who had to order it on our behalf, receive it, repack 
package it up and then resend it across the world. Absolutely worth it though. Oh, the golden snitch. And the golden snitch flies off into Hogwarts. This is so cool. Oh, it lets you change your crest to one of the four houses. And you know what? It's not just the presentation of the phone that's leveled up this time. The actual core spec behind it is also way improved. It's got 120 hertz OLED display, a high-end Snapdragon chip, 12 gigabytes of RAM. We've got a very dainty looking custom font for the clock. What about custom ringtone? That's not Harry Potter, is it? I mean, there is absolutely no way that the company's making significant profit on this. The only purpose of this device and phones like this is to appear in front of the eyes of a completely new audience. This is why you see some really strange phone collabs that on the face of it might seem very not typical. That's actually the entire goal. Just like actually the Hello Kitty phone, which has relatively modest packaging compared to what we've come from. But notice those hidden kitties on the surface. We'll come back to those. So near the top is a case, kind of weird looking. I feel like it just looks kind of blurry. This is not for me. We've got the phone, and then underneath that, a uh, pretty standard cable and charger. So what makes this so special? Well, I have to say, I think this is actually my favorite core phone design that I've seen so far. It's extremely smooth all the way around because the screen curves, the back curves. It's basically like holding a really rounded pebble. I love the little red accents on the button, the camera rings, the text, and the finish is almost like a hairy texture to it. It's like stroking a cat. At least it's not as dirty as Milo. Oh, this is very happy. Really nice and crisp screen. There's not too much else in the way of theming. I was kind of hoping for a cat filter in the camera. It's quite a selfie focused phone. Look at this. You've got one times 0.8 times and then 0.6 times too. That's a wide selfie. But I have not shown you the coolest thing yet. The main thing that makes this special is the fact that this is photochromic glass, which can respond to UV light and change color. I hope this works. I'm going to do a concentrated beam of UV light on this one poor little kitty at the top and it's gone red. I don't think they're expecting you to carry around a UV torch, but it means that if you're using it in direct sunlight, you'll notice the change. I can't believe I've hired the fanciest venue I could possibly find. And I'm sat here playing with my Hello Kitty phone. But hey, if you're enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be perfect. Right, now we're heading straight to flagship territory with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV Gaming Edition. <laughs> Sorry, I was just trying to do a cool intro. So this is a pretty ordinary flagship phone by most accounts. It doesn't come with any crass branding or unique colors. It's actually shockingly bland. What makes this a special gaming edition though is what it comes with, the Xperia Stream. This is where the phones get serious. We don't really have any uh, lights to change in here or TVs. Oh no. There's a TV there, to be fair. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, perfect. That's meant to be blue. <laughs> Anyways, this was not actually available anywhere but Japan. So I was Google translating the entire thing and only like 30% sure that it was actually gonna turn up. So this is a relief. So the Xperia Stream is effectively a case that completely blocks the phone's cameras because gamers don't take photos, apparently. But it does make it feel like a Kind of like a first gen PSP. It's meaty, that's probably the right word. If we power the phone on, there is actually a full on fan at the back. The air is actually spilling onto my fingers though, that's quite nice. But to be honest, the more surprising thing is this has a full on ethernet. That feels very overkill. But what I'm actually quite excited about is also HDMI. All right, so let's try and plug it into this ridiculous TV. HDMI in, feels so weird to do that to a phone. Oh, we're on. It's very, very snappy and responsive. Let's open a game. So that's what the fan sounds like. How does a fan so small make so much noise? It does feel very cinematic to have the video and the audio coming out of a big screen like this. But is it useful? I guess one perk is if I'm playing a mobile game and I want my friends to watch what I'm doing, this is one way of doing that. The phone does also have a couple of other really cool features for gaming, like a really bright 4K screen and a software feature called Low Gamma Razor to kind of bring up the darker areas and allow you to properly see enemies trying to hide in them. At $1,200 then, it's actually one of the more accessible limited editions out there. Samsung's exclusive online S23 variants. Okay, so nice chunky box. But you get a free pair of Galaxy Buds 2 on top. That's about $150 worth of earphones. Just the normal black ones though, nothing custom there. Manuals? Uh, nope, that's actually just an ad. Oh, another peel tab. Okay, I didn't screw that one up. And this is interesting. A pretty colorful version of the normal S23 Ultra box. It's got two very short, but very satisfying tags on the back. And then inside, wow, that is red. 
Okay, there's no two ways about it. This easily looks better than the default photo. I do wish the red was a little bit more vibrant, but it's nice to have some color. And then it transitions into matte black sides. This isn't like a branded collab, but it is quite interesting how Samsung saves what they must know are the best color options for exclusively their website. I guess when you're buying the phone off Samsung Direct, that's where they make the highest margin. So this is their way of nudging people towards that. Oh yeah, one thing they do do though is the wallpaper on this phone is a slightly warmer shade than the wallpaper on the other Galaxy S23 Ultras. <laughs> the little victories. Okay, we're into what I would call the Uber tier now. Don't ask me how I got this thing. It's almost impossible. But in front of you right now is the Vincent van Gogh phone. Holy cow, look at the artwork. This is his most famous painting, The Starry Night, brought into three dimensions. I am mesmerized right now. So if you open the box up, what does it say? The sight of the stars makes me dream. I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> this is a proper luxury experience. I mean, charger, oh crikey, I am not built for this. And then there's two separate cables. Have we ever seen this before? Why would there be two cables? And then a second, Charger, what is going on? There's a case. This feels good. It's very smooth. And look at the size of the camera module. There's a standard SIM ejector below that. And then the device. Holy cow. This is the most incredible smartphone display I've ever seen. It goes right up to the corners. You can't see the front camera at all. It's invisible. And the colors are intense. I guess it makes a lot of sense on this phone since it's all about art. I don't think I've ever seen a front camera that well disguised. Bet the quality is gonna suck. Oh God, that's actually even worse than I expected. Oh, you can actually see the, the matrix of the display. Then you look at the screen and you just want to forgive it. And the back has a very, very fine, almost like vinyl texture. I think it would have had to have been laser etched. This is so cool. So it's got a special switch on the top corner and the second you toggle it, it opens a camera. Actually, yeah, wait, this is the largest camera module I think I've ever seen on a phone. How good is it? Oh, well, it can take a cracking photo of my hand. Photos are incredible, but it's really when you're taking video that you tend to notice the, the difference between companies who spend a lot of time optimizing and the companies who don't. It's Transformers time. This is the Optimus Prime phone. And as it turns out, it arrived to me at the exact same time as this, which was actually a massive coincidence. They don't come together, but I think it would be dumb of me to not show them off together. So the phone first comes in a beast of a box. I love this pin on top, super premium. And then the insert has a black custom SIM ejector, manuals, and a case, which is actually made of metal in the middle to allow heat to be conducted out through it, which is kind of incredible. Got a secret hidden drawer at the top, which has a massive charger the bottom drawer has a calling attachment, and then the phone. This look is right up my alley. This has got such a cool finish. And the fact that the entire middle is metal is a practical thing too, because it just helps to get heat out of the phone. Got a very over-sharpened looking Transformers wallpaper. Kind of futuristic font on the clock. Oh, and there is the fan. This phone actually has a fan on the inside, which is cool, but surely not needed for me to be on the home screen. God, these icons are so heavily customized. I can't even tell what's what. This is another one of those phones that's using an invisible front-facing camera. And while I do definitely hate the hit to quality that it has right now, it does make the screen look a lot better. So you've got a whole load of different custom wallpapers pre-installed. But I think the fact that these wallpapers are so over-sharpened and the fact that it's just kind of cluttered, it just makes it feel a bit cheap, even though it's absolutely not cheap. Like, I know I'm nitpicking, but given that this is the default wallpaper of the phone, it shouldn't be shipping with a widget sitting right on top of Optimus Prime's face. And to complete the look, let's have a look at Optimus Prime himself. Ooh, this is not a toy. This is a piece of equipment. It comes in a proper suitcase and damn, what an insane thing to actually exist. This would have been like a dream birthday present for me like 15 years ago. So if I open up the app for the robot, I am Optimus Prime. This is us, uh, remote control. Oh my God, you can, Ooh. No, no. I think I just had a nerd cousin. I think we've actually got weapons in this box. There you go. There's so many different movements you can make him do. I kind of feel like it'd be so perfect to make this dance. The hand recoils after every single shot it fires. No. Jesus Christ, you keep that thing away from me. Look, you can make your own actions. So you get full control over every single one of its joints. So left wrist, right wrist, waist. It's really intricately done. Do you think he'd beat Milo in a fight? <laughs> Now, if you've been watching tech YouTube for years now, I'd be very surprised if you haven't heard of Genshin Impact. It's kind of become the game to test out how powerful a new phone is. And so having a Genshin Impact branded phone is a 
pretty big deal, I think. This is another one of those double trouble kind of situations. So the slightly smaller box is a pair of earbuds. These should actually be higher end than the Harry Potter ones from earlier, considering the price gap between the two phones. And I love the presentation. I believe this is the backpack from Klee, one of the playable characters, and the earphones themselves. Wow, they're so smooth. It's like an egg. <laughs> That's kind of pretty. I mean, the attention to detail is supreme. Got a little sliver of gold around the USB-C port, and also this really fine corrugated texture within the earphones. Very bouncy and upbeat sound. The biggest thing actually is just how crisp it is. Still a little bit lacking on the base end, but I would rate these a solid eight out of 10 for the price. I've actually also realized there's a little pull tab on this. Whoa, that's a SIM ejector tool. It's absolutely massive. This is so cool. <laughs> Wait a sec, we might actually need to censor this. Time for the phone. I mean, I've actually covered a limited edition Genshin Impact phone before, but that one was pretty half-assed. But this is most definitely the real deal. I mean, this is so dense and premium. It's packaged like some sort of holy scripture. Whoa, this is unexpected. 3D pre-framed artwork. I mean, this is how you do it. There's a mouse map underneath that. I mean, that's way better than some limited editions that just chuck a poster in there. This is something you can actually use. Okay, so what else? There's a case. Again, this is by no means vanilla. It's got the character. Okay, three more boxes in here. The first one is a, a coin. Oh, okay, it's a stand for this ghost, which is just, I guess, a nice dense little statue. There's a pretty standard OnePlus charging cable, because this is a OnePlus collab. Now the charger is also slightly customized. Wait, what? 160 watts. All right, let's look at this smartphone. Oh, wow. I mean, that's a proper animated lock screen. Oh kind of dies a little bit on the inside. I mean, the theme looks somewhat cohesive, but more importantly, I guess, not messy, which is more than I can say for some of these phones. It's also got a special edition Genshin Impact themed always on clock. Let's see what the charging animation's like. Oh, cool. It's like anime fire. And when you unplug, the fire slowly fades away. I wouldn't say I'm a huge fan of this whole design here. It kind of looks like someone's half peeled off a protector that was meant to be on the back. But this mocha color, is something that I want to see more of. And it has a really nice texture. It is smooth, but it's also very, very slightly gritty. Right, so just before we get to what I would call the ultra luxury price range, we have a $3,000 phone here. This is the S23 Ultra BMW edition. Why is it $3,000? Well, on top you get a sub box, which is apparently a cup holder and a wireless charger. But I guess the concept is that lots of BMWs out there don't have wireless chargers or cup holders. So let's add one to them. And then the main box is a car. I can't believe this is real. This is a proper metal car bonnet. They're calling it the Ultimate G23. So the first thing you see on top is a box with not one, but two little posters inside of it. We've got the phone case, which is quite interesting. This is actually the shape of BMW's new grills that they started using, which not everyone loves. We've got the box with the phone itself and fridge magnet. We are BMW Motorsport, I guess. All right, so if we take off this layer, my goodness, this is something else. I guess this is every BMW logo through the ages, crystallized into coins. And then if we take that layer off, it just keeps giving. I mean, at least no BMW fan is gonna be disappointed here. So, okay, some papers that tell you about BMW and the phone, a collector's case for every single one of these coins, some BMW branded, wait, what is this? Can someone please tell me what this is? You got what I think is a magnetic sunglasses holder. This is all very unexpected for a phone. A keychain, which can fit whatever your favorite coin in the collection was. And then, well, apparently an actual air compressor. I thought it was a power bank first. Then I thought it was an iPod, but no. This will inflate your 10 year old football. And then the phone. Of course I screwed it up. Some things never change. But if I try hard enough, get through. That is a cool boot screen. Oh, and then we got a fancy moving lock screen as well. Oh, the home button is a BMW logo. To be fair to them, they've even made a custom icon pack for all the Samsung apps, at least. There is also the BMW Vantage app, which you use to control your BMW car, if you have one. But I actually don't own a car. <sighs> I'm really torn with how I feel about this phone. Because on one hand, you know, the software is great. The packaging and presentation is thorough to a level that I don't think I've ever seen before. They made the phone itself just plain black. It's not even a new color. I mean, yeah, it does come with a special case, but if you decide not to use that, no one would even know that you're using the BMW edition and it's $3,000 plus. Man. This one phone right here took me about two months to get hold of. I actually needed to employ the help of another YouTuber, Danny Wingit, who knows another guy who helped me to actually get it. 
Now, if you thought the last few phones were expensive, just one item within this box is worth over $10,000. Oh God, it feels so good. I miss Russia. So, oh, that's cool. Four little magnetic tabs. And inside that, another suitcase. <laughs> this is classic caviar. Wow, this is such a slick finale. It says Caviar Desperado. So this has not been opened before. I really, really hope this is the unlock code. Otherwise, we've got some trouble. Yes, it is. Holy... What is that? Okay, let's take that top layer off. No way! They've actually given me gloves. Is this like a hint? Okay, so we've got a USB-C cable. We've got a pair of Apple earpods. You like to think, genuine. Hello. Yes, yeah, all good, thank you. Oh gosh, it's not, it is a phone. What do you think? Would you use it? I know a lot of people that w <laughs> It's probably one of the stranger things happened in this hall. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There's two more inserts over here. That's a case. How much do you reckon this phone case is worth? It's really premium. This is what looks like crocodile leather. This is what I assume will be 24 karat gold. And it's ribbed all on the inside to make sure your phone stays in place. I will say a lot of things that come out of this company's doors are quite garish. This I actually don't mind. So this is... $1,200. It's a $1,200 case. And they've used electroplating to get the gold on there, which basically uses a current to allow them to apply a really, really thin layer of metal. And in the other envelope, it's a load of papers and certificates and signatures. Not important. Right. And this is... Ow. This is the true centerpiece. I feel like some sort of jewelry dealer. It's on the far left. They've got some sort of chain that they've secured down by using pins. It just seems unnecessarily dangerous. This is the heaviest chain I think I've ever held. And then the pendant to attach to it, that's just a full on bullet. It says silence is gold. As much as this goes against all of my natural fashion urges. Oh wow. <laughs> I feel like I'm slowly being turned into a gangster. A gangster who speaks Queen's English. So these are the AirPods Pro second generation, with again, leather all the way around the outside. And a skull with the LED right in between the eyes. That feels slightly morbid. And it's kind of crazy because these AirPods, on their own, without the phone, without the case, are $3,000. And I imagine a big part of why is that they come with these. So this is some sort of attachment that's apparently inspired by Dubai. But the concept, according to Caviar, is that Dubai is just this place that embodies luxury. Everything about the buildings, what people wear, the culture. And so this is designed to reflect that by having elements of the private Palm Jumeirah Island. I mean, they still just sound like AirPods, which is to say good, but you know, not $3,000. And to take that to the next level, <coughs> it's properly wedged in there. How do you get this out? Oh God, I hate to do this. This doesn't feel right. Oh, sugar. I have just cracked the screen. I used the charger to try and get it out. Please tell me that's the screen protector. Oh my god, it's just the screen protector. This is absolutely crazy. Imagine going through airport security with one of these. Or even just like taking a phone call on the train. If you use this for a year, what do you think is the likelihood that someone doesn't call security on you on at least one occasion? Okay, so the black stuff is aviation titanium, which we've actually tried shooting with a gun before. It's very, very strong. These patterns are all gold electroplated, and the handle of the gun is actual wood. Limited edition, one of 99. And these are the materials they've used in it. This is almost definitely the most textured, detailed, frightening phone I've ever held in my hands. All right, let's record this on the $10,000 phone. So about three months ago, I started using Opera's internet browser every single day for a very simple reason. It can use Lucid mode to make everything that you watch on this browser sharper, reduce the blur and increase the contrast. But just recently, it has gone to a whole new level thanks to the AI tools. It's the first browser that has ChatGPT and ChatSonic baked into the sidebar. So you can talk to it without even changing tabs when browsing. Plus, let's just say that you come across an article that you're really interested in, but it's like 5,000 words. With this browser, you just click shorten and Opera will use the natural language processing of ChatGPT to summarize it. If you're applying for a job, you can just ask it to write your cover letter. You can tell it what you have left in your fridge and it'll tell you what you can make with it. And you can enable all this stuff via the easy setup button in the top right corner. Opera says this is just the start. Like not only do they have the built-in ad blocker and a free VPN, they've actually announced a collaboration with OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT. But I won't spoil the details, link in the description to get it now for free.